Mm. Yep. Mm. So we'll go to Koto. Welcome. And thank you for coming along to our farm environment mapping webinar. Yes. Yes. I'm Nadine Berry and I'm the Waikato Regional Coordinator for the New Zealand Land Care Trust. This is the first of a series of farm mapping webinars, webinars that we're running around the country with Diane uh, Zuketo. And this webinar, seminar, webinar we are running um, has a water quality and pharmacistics focus. We've developed a great uh, webinar for you today. And Don Mackey is here with me from Patarangi. And we'll be hearing a little bit about what he's doing with regards to his farm environmental map. And Diane, our geospatial consultant, will provide expert advice on all we need to know about farm environmental mapping, along with the live demonstration. So next slide here. Welcome. Um, as we get started, grab yourself a cup of tea and a comfy chair. You're all muted. But please use the chat box to let us know where you're zooming in from this morning and maybe what the weather's like. It's nice and sunny here. Um, use the chat function at any time to ask questions as we go along. It's great to have you all here today. And thank you for taking the time out of your day to attend. So we will be recording this session too to watch later. Okay, here we go. Next slide. This is our outline for the morning. Our main objective is that you come away feeling confident to use Google My Maps to map water features and other infrastructure on your farm. So next slide, please. Most people know what a farm environment plan is, but there are still some uncertainty around certification and regulation and so on. One thing is clear though, an EPP is a useful tool to have for your farm and allows you to be on the front foot when regulations do come along. Ideally, an EPP should also help you see where you fit into the wider catchment, and you can record the positive changes you are making over time. Diane will now take over and talk about what should be in an EPP. Thank you. So a farm environment plan is a document which contains a farm map. So um, what should be in a FEP, your farm details, a farm map, and your map will identify all significant infrastructure and natural features, the FEP will contain an assessment of risk from farming activities on water quality. It will contain good management practice the farm is currently doing and identify time-bound actions in place to mitigate impacts. So, so, so plan, plan, action plan, pretty much. And it should be written by you, the farmer, or with your input. So what should be on your farm map? So you want to identify all significant infrastructure and natural features. For example, we can start with the, your farm boundary. So we can constrain the, um, the map to just your farm boundary, your property boundary. You might want to identify your land management units or your farm blocks. Um, we want to map waterways such as rivers, streams, watercourses and water bodies such as farm dams, lakes, wetlands, riparian zones, fence lines adjacent to waterways and water bodies. You wanna identify stock crossings, tracks and races, and any critical source areas, such as overland flow paths, yards, animal holding areas, standing pads, feed out areas, et cetera. So now we'll hear from Don about his farm and what he has done. Unmutualized, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Um, hello there. Uh, our farm is 146 hectares with a milking platform of 140 hectares. We have two watercourses running through the property with the Mangapiko stream as our back boundary. Our focus is a biologically healthy soil and clean, healthy waterways. We make sure the watercourses are all free flowing uh, with a digger used for cleaning the bottoms only, no spraying. The watercourses are all fenced with intermittent planting of pin oaks and other shade trees. The planting along the back boundary, the Mangapiko stream, is predominantly natives, uh, with the retiring of some additional land alongside the stream to provide a wider, more aesthetic and effective buffer. We have a couple of steeper grassed areas uh, mapped as scrub on, the, uh, on this map. Um, 
where we graze lightly with empties, uh, freezer beasts, etc. There is intermittent tree planting in these areas. We spray liquid effluent over 70 hectares, which is half our milking platform. With the effluent solids being spread outside of the sprayed area, mainly on hillsides where the cows don't camp. Cows are dry at the moment, so the rainwater from the shed, the concrete areas and the roof is diverted into a separate freshwater pond until we start calving again at which stage we revert back to our normal effluent pond system. We try to minimize the amount of gray water that enters the effluent ponds, which means keeping surface water runoff courses open and free flowing. We use slow release dicalcic phosphate fertilizers, 30 units of P per hectare per annum and polymer coated control release nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, when we do apply in, which is no more than 30 units of N uh, per hectare per annum. These fertilizers have far better utilization of the P and N, thereby absolutely minimizing any P or N loss into the waterways. Our nitrogen reference point is about 25 and we grow between 17 and 18 tons of pasture dry matter per hectare per annum. Uh, we want our practices to be biologically and environmentally effective uh, and we believe we all can and should undertake these sort of actions. If these farm environment plans help introduce these actions, then bring them on. It is possible to be highly productive while maintaining a high level of environmental, environmentally friendly uh, sustainable farming practices. Thank you. That's great. So um, we'll move on to the technical aspects now of actually creating your own farm map. So I've got an, a table here that outlines several mapping tools that you can use. And it starts from basic to advanced. So and the learning curve is quite steep from Google Maps through to QGIS. Um, and I'll run through these. So this is Google My Maps. Um, and if you've used Google Maps on your computer or on your phone, you'll be familiar with the look and feel of it because it's pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is you can actually add features. So add your points, lines and polygons and create your own map. Um, so this webinar, we're going to focus on using Google My Maps for creating your farm map. And that's essentially because Google My Maps is a simple and easy to use tool where you don't need to download any software or save your files to the computer. All of your data is saved in Google and you can view your map on the Google Maps app on your mobile phone. So while you're out on your farm, if you've got cell phone coverage, you can pull up your map on, your, on the Google Maps app on your phone. So that's pretty cool. And that's um, a unique thing that separates Google My Maps from the three other applications I listed, Google Earth, ArcGIS Earth, and QGIS. So, um, if, but if you do wanna create an accurate map where accurate locations are vital, where you can measure the length of your fence lines or paddock areas, I would recommend looking at the other applications, particularly QGIS. Google My Maps will meet the needs of creating a farm plan that outlines the significant infrastructure and natural features that are required in a FEP. So with Google My Maps, the functionality you can share, you can print, you can download the features, the map is online, and you can access your map on the Google Maps mobile app. The next step up is Google Earth Pro. So this, you need to download the application onto your computer and all your files are saved onto your computer. Um, and again, you can add edit features, you can save the map as an image, you can email it, you can print it, you can um, import data from different formats. Like if you receive data from a third party or you wanna share data, you can do that in Google Earth Pro. And, um, and the other cool thing in Google Earth Pro is you can view your map in 3D. So I'll flip back to my Google 
So we can see this is the same map. So this is it in Google My Maps. And then I'll flip back to Google Earth and you can see it's slightly 3D because if I zoom any more, we'll lose the extent of, of the map. So that's a, that's a really cool separation point as well. Google, oh, and then ArcGIS Earth is similar to Google Earth. Um, similar functionality, you can see your map in 3D, you can add and edit features, you can save your map as an image, you can email map, your map, print map, input data from different formats. Um, but the cool thing about ArcGIS Earth is a lot of the local councils use the ArcGIS platform and have their web maps online so you can add their data feed into your map. So if you want to have a look at the, the regional plan um, constraints that might apply to your property, you can add them in as a data feed. And then QGIS, it's a high level GIS application used for mapping, data analysis and cartography. And you can see straight away, um, you've got so many more tools there at the top. You've got lots of different menus. It's just, it can be complicated. Um, and that's why I put it at the end of the steep learning curve. With QGIS, your map needs to be built from scratch where you have to add each layer to the map. So the concept is much like a Word document. When you open up Word, you have a blank screen and you have to type your document in. When you open up QGIS, you have a blank screen and you have to compose your map as you do a Word document by adding your layers in one by one. And you can create data as well. It's a powerful application enabling you to add edit features save your map as an image, print map, import and export, and add the data feeds, um, such as the, again, the regional council, regional plans, data feeds. And the other cool thing with um, QGIS is you can add in the LIDAR data that you regional council may have acquired over your property, and any drone aerials that if you've got a drone and you do your own little Mapping, you can add them into QGIS as well. So the next part of my presentation will show you how to use Google My Maps to create your farm map. So I've put the URL up the top there um, and I'll put them in the chat as well at the end. Um, so for Google My Maps, you'll need a Google account, a Gmail account. Um, and if you don't have one, you can create one, it's pretty simple. And then you click on the red banner at the top there, create a new map. And then you're presented with this screen. So you can click on untitled map and give your name, your map a name and a description. And then you can rename your the untitled layer to existing or current. So when you're doing your farm map, you might want to start theming your features into groups. So you might want to start mapping your current um, situation. And then you can add a plan. So your plan works for the next financial year. And then you might want to add another group called future, which is things that you'd like to do, but you haven't planned them into what financial year or you haven't got the funding for it. So in the um, first group, your existing or your current, this is where you add your existing current um, farm features, such as your farm boundary, your waterways, your planting that you've undertaken, any erosion prone land. Um, and to help your mapping as well, is you might want to switch over to the satellite image. So you can, at the bottom, um, you can drop down and you're given a selection of base maps you can switch to. So you can see in this map here that it's going to be really hard to identify where your features are because the satellite image or the aerial photography will really help in that, with that. So we switch to the satellite image and then you can start mapping by adding a line feature. 
So a good starting point would be your farm boundary. And then you can add in your waterways, your water bodies, your farm races, your stock crossings. And as you draw in your features, you need to give them a name and a color and theme the features. So like waterways will be blue, tracks might be gray, farm, bound, farm um, boundary might be black. So you've got to think about the theme, your color themes. So then we add in a new layer and we'll call that 2021 to 2022. And these are for your planned works that you're going to do in the next financial work next financial year. So your planned fencing, your planned planting. And as before, you draw in your features and give each a name and a color. And you see there I've got future. So this is the, the things I'd like to do, but I haven't planned which financial year I've got I'm going to allocate the funding for, allocate them in my budget. So Google automatically saves your map and any changes to it as you go. Your map is saved online and in your Google account. If you want to back, back it up, you can save your data to your computer using the export to KML. And this, is all, this also enables you to share it to a third party if you wish. You can print your map to a PDF for your file records. And this, was, this will be good to add it into your farm environment plan. So print your map out and then you can put it into the farm environment plan document. And you can share your map if you need to share it to a third party um, to get help or whatever, um, you can share your map. So I'd recommend sharing your map using the enable link sharing. So that means anyone with the link will have access to your map. You'd, I wouldn't, I would advise against clicking the sharing it to the public because that means anyone on the internet can see your map and make changes to it. So now I'm going to do a live demo using Don's farm. So I'm going to switch over to Google My Maps. And so when you log into Google My Maps, you get a similar little, you may not have any, you probably won't have any of these little maps because you haven't created any yet. So these are all the little maps that I've created. Um, and this part of Rangi is Don's map. So to start with, I've got the catchment boundary. So we can have a look at where um, Don's farm sits within the catchment and then we can zoom in so this is Don's farm and I'm going to switch over to the base map and change it to the satellite and then I'll switch off the catchment and now we can see all this really good work that Don has done along the Mangapiko stream so if we were wanting to map um, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to call it current. And then, so the other important thing to note is notice how this has got a very subtle blue bar against it. That lets me know that this layer is where my new features are going to be added to. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map in. The Manga Pico stream. So, as with any live demos, there are little teething, there's always little teething problems but we'll just run with it. So I want to map the stream as it runs along Dawn's boundary. And when we finish, um, we double click to finish the line and then you give it a name. 
save that, and then we give it a color. And I'm gonna make it a thick line because that um, shows the level of, that it's a, a major stream. Um, and then the other thing you might wanna do is We'll add another line along the stream, and this will be the fence line. Double click to end, give it a name, save that, and then give it a color. So I'm gonna make fences yellow. And then I'm going to zoom in and we'll map all this planting that Don has been doing along the stream here. So in terms of accuracy, um, you can see it's, it's not an exact science using Google My Maps, but the point of it is it gives you a plan and a concept that these are the works that you've done and it shows where you've been doing those works or where you want to do those works. So when I want to complete this polygon, I click on my starting point. Planting. And I change my color to green because trees are green. So you can see pretty much this is what you do. Um, and you do your whole farm. So um, I'm not familiar with Don's farm, so I'm just going to say perhaps there might be a stop crossing. Well, there's a farm track there, so we'll put that in. There's a farm track there, so we'll put that in. Isn't that great? Um, and then what is this bit here, Don? That is... Oh. Uh, an effluent hold. Okay. Uh, it's in the area that I said was scrubbed before. Yes. So it's just um, and um, uh, what am I trying? What's the word I'm trying to say? Um, It'll be like a critical source point sort of thing, um, when it? Awful hole. Awful hole. Okay, so we'll call it a critical source point because that could be, you know, um, an area that might affect your water quality. So we'll make that orange. And then you might have, um, what I wanted to show was a stop crossing because it's got a really cool, um, we'll just put one up here when you want to add your point features. So we'll just say that there's a stop crossing here. Put in your point, give it a name, spell it correctly, save. And you've got all these different little icons. And the other cool thing is you can filter them. So we want to put a little cow there to show that it's a stop crossing. So that's pretty cool. So then we might have um, planned work. So we add another layer. And this will be our 2021 to 2022. And I'll turn that off and turn my property boundary back on. And this might be work um, that you wanna do in the next financial year. So um, we could say 
these look like steep slopes. Yep, that's yep, that's steep. That's yeah, no, no, so, that is um, earmarked for a bit more infill planting. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll go in fill planting. That's great. We'll give it a color because trees are green. Right, and and we'll say, I'm not sure if that's a little waterway down there, but we'll say we want to perhaps fence that off. Yes. So you can see we put those two together and we've got like a little little farm plan for that can go into our farm environment or our farm map that can go into our farm environment plan. Um, and that's um, the concepts of creating your farm map using Google My Maps. It's a little bit quick, um, but hopefully I've shown it in such a way that it will be easy for you to pick up. Um, and if you've got any questions, let us know. At this point in time, we haven't got any questions coming in um, around how to do mapping on using my maps just yet. But I have sent if anyone would like to ask any questions that they can do so. I know there was um, discussion around using the Google products for a commercial um, for commercial purposes, um, and there are issues around that, especially when you're using Google Earth Pro. In that, if you need to use it as a for a commercial purpose, you need to have a license for it, um, and that's why I put in the ArcGIS Earth in there because that is free regardless of whether it's for personal or commercial. So Diane, we've just had a question about if you want to go from the farm scale to a catchment scale. Okay. How do you get the catchment layer? How do we get the catchment layer? Right. Good question. So I'll go back here and now I've just switched, I've just added another tab. Can you see my tab, my screen? Yes, we can, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the MFE um, data store and you can see I'm, I'm in preparation of doing this for Rick's presentation this afternoon because he has the exactly same question. So in MFE, um, there is so, there's a lot of data. And if we search for catchment, you can see that we get so many different catchments. There are so many different catchment layers out there. So um, you either talk to your um, land care coordinator to figure out what order catchment your farm is in, because um, depending on where it is in the catchment and what stream orders you've got, um, if it's in the upper catchment, you might be level seven or one. I can't remember which way around it goes. But you, so you go in here, you navigate to your property and then play around with these catchment orders, switch them on, switch them off and see which one covers your farm or if you want to do the whole catchment. And then there's this little um, box crop tool. So you want to set the crop. So for Rick, he wants this little catchment this afternoon. So all we want to do is put a box around this little catchment. And again, with this MFE data store, you need a login. You need to register to be able to download any data. So I've put my little um, box around there, and then I want to click download, except I've got a couple of ones in here ready for this afternoon. Have you 
you did for Don? I have. Yeah. Because so. the other, another way of finding this too, if this is a bit overwhelming for people, is to ring their land management officer at the regional council and ask, find out what catchment they're in. I think at a regional... That might be easier. Yeah, there's information there too. Um, yes. Yeah, but this is awesome. So this is a, a different way. And when you go to download, um, you want to select Google Earth and you want it to be less than five meg because it won't add to your, your map. Um, so I'll go back to my map here. And so I had, um, this was catchment order five for Don's map. So I'll switch these layers off and I'll change our base map back to this one. So this is order five and order six is bigger. So you can see the difference between the different orders. Mm. Um, and so if I'd gone to the um, MFE website, downloaded the catchment, then you need to add layer. And then you'd go to import. And I would then you can navigate to where you are um, where you load um, where you saved your catchment layer and then put it in, upload it, and then it loads it in here. So I'll just switch these two off. And this is the new one that we've just downloaded and that we're loading in. And you can see it brings in a lot of information because the area that I clipped out was quite large. And there is a bit of mucking about to um, figure out and isolate just to that one catchment. Switch those off. So we just want that one catchment, but you can see when I did my clip, I clipped the surrounding area as well. But you can see the um, neighboring catchments, which is pretty cool as well. There might be people in your neighboring catchment that you work with, but they're not in your catchment um, necessarily. Yeah, but they're across the road. Yeah. I've also just had another question, Diane, asking, is there any standard color code for different features at the farm that everyone can use commonly, or do people just choose their own? People generally choose their own, but there is, um, in the world of mapping, there are like rules that we generally follow. You know, water is usually blue, planting is usually green. Um, high risk areas are usually orange or red, depending on the level of risk. It might be yellow, orange or red, depending on the how, you know, the level of risk. Like um, <laughs> but yeah, it's up to up to you to decide, you know, how, how you want to represent the features on your farm. But I, I try and represent how they look in real life. Like um, roads are usually black, tracks are usually brown. No, but you don't have to follow that. And it also depends also on how it's going to show up against that aerial photo, the satellite image. Because um, you see, when I put in some of the green areas, you've got to be careful that they don't get hidden on the um, satellite image. So initially I was going to choose, you know, a lighter green, but then that would get lost. So um, you want to choose like, contrasting colors so that it shows up against your um, base map. So that was a very good question. Oh. Rules in respect of um, health with riparian fencing uh, and planting, there are certain requirements given that you're getting funding for the planting from some of the um, funding organizations. Uh, 
we've got uh, an area within our catchment area, the Mangatauchi Whakarongi Ecological Corridor, and these people are wanting to join in and they're asking for advice on what are the requirements for the fencing. In other words, you know, is it a two meter setback, a five meter setback? It varies in different areas. Um, it's quite relevant if you're putting together these farm environment plans. Where would we source that information to know where we're going to be putting our fencing? What do the rules say? Um, right, I'm not I'm not sure about the rules, but I know in um, in the MFA data store there is um, a layer that has the let's just find it. The stock exclusion on low slope. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if you can see that layer, but this is the um, the work that MFE did on identifying the stock exclusion on low slope. And this is the layer that they use to map um, your fencing requirements, whether it's a five meter setback or a 10 meter setback, but the layer doesn't actually say what the setback is, but this does show where those rules would apply. Move that out of the way. And I've just got to try and find, navigate myself so I can line these two maps up. Yeah, let me do. Because I'm not familiar with the area. Over here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, through there. Yeah. yeah. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that it's um it's in the stock exclusion because it's flat. Mm. Um, but they don't say whether it's a five meter setback or a ten meter setback. So you, again might be something that you could ask the regional council and they'll be able to give you some advice on that yes and it will be in the um in the regional plan as well they'll have that so another question that's come in there diane is can you measure area and length using google my maps okay so you can but it's pretty rough and ready it means <laughs> it's not very accurate but um See, I, I, this is the farm track that I mapped before. And I click on it and it tells me it's 607 metres. Um, and then this planting area I put in down here, it tells me it's half a hectare. So it does give you an, a rough idea, but it's not exact. So if you want it exact, that's where I'd recommend using the um, more advanced GIS mapping tools such as QGIS, because then you can get in and you can map it really accurately. Um, otherwise, you can spend time here and you know meticulously map um, each you know bend in, in your feature to get an accurate measurement. So I'll just put that, so that's 0.22 hectares. So you can, but it's not very accurate. And oh, Nadine, you're mute. 
Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I was, I was just typing. I didn't want to. But I just had a, um, a comment come in saying that MFE is currently reviewing that layer, the layer that you talked about just before. And okay. did a terrible job of capturing actual low slope land. At least 33% uh, of the land captured was over the designated low slope angle. So, um, so that's some information for us to know that we perhaps didn't know before, which was really good. Um, and we've also had some comments come in saying there are rules around minimum, but also consider access for maintenance, contractors for pest control, keeping a grass buffer as an unplanted active filter. Some catchment groups and landowners are now realizing they needed to factor three meters of room inside the fence for maintenance and physical access for quads, track lines, and etc. So there is other things to consider, not just the minimum um, when it comes to these sorts of mapping, um, which is sometimes not, not so easy when you're just looking at it on a map, but when you're actually on the land and you go, oh, yes. you know what? yeah, we need to do this. So that's yes. a It's not in the check science. No, 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 no. no. But all good information coming through. And we've had another positive comment from Fred from Whangaroa Harbour here saying that, um, that, that he's really, um, thank you for helping landowners to help comply with the rules, but more importantly, mapping improvements. It's inspiring more positive change in farming and land use. So Fred's been mapping change over 25 years in the Raglan catchment and the positive change is incredible. So thank you very much, Fred, for your comments there. It's been great. Thanks. Anyone else got any questions? So, oh, sorry, you were carrying on about your, you were sorry, um, about the um, area and um, length. The length, yes. About, yes. So um, the more accurately you map them, the more accurately the measurement's going to be. Mm. So, I mean, you can see just by when I map that river with all those bends and angles there, it's not going to be very accurate. But when I map this little um, pond, I call it a wetland, um, you can see it's more accurate. So, yeah. But you can, you can, yes, the answer is, short answer is, yes, you can get your area and your lens. You just click on your feature and it comes up in the little pop-up box. How do you, um, can you alter, edit a feature once you've made it? Right. Um, I've tried that. So I've got this fence here. So you can. But it's a bit clunky. So I'm not sure whether it would be, it would save more time just deleting it and adding it in again, or whether you want to edit it. So we can just delete that and then we'll just add it in again. Because yeah, moving it is, is a bit clunky. You can move it by, so each one of these dots is called a vertex. So you can move each vertex at, at once, or you can click on the whole thing and move the whole thing. <laughs> so you can have a bit of fun with it. Um, I've done that quite a few times when I've had the property boundary switched on and I, I wanna map something and I've actually grabbed the property boundary and moved that. So yeah, it can be a bit annoying. Um, but you can change the color of it. And you can change the line width as well. And then with the polygons, you can actually change the transparency as well. So you can make them totally transparent or you can make them a solid fill. So we'll just go pick like a halfway so we can actually see both. Excellent, cool. Anything else you feel we need to map? When it comes to water or um, else that I was interested in. We probably should map these effluent ponds. So we'll just put those in. And again, when you're doing polygons, you finish the polygon on the point that you started, and then that makes a polygon. Otherwise, you'll end up with just a, a line. So I'm going to make these um, orange because it's like a critical source point. Yep. 
below that is also correct. That's an effluent pond. There's two of them. Um, the other pond at the top there uh, has been disconnected. It was leaking, and that's okay. now our freshwater pond, which oh, okay. is our water's running into now with the cows away. That's a different category because it's been disconnected because it was leaking. So then we can go call that freshwater pond. And that's good to know. Um, good to put that on your farm plan because these are your effluent ones and that and is no longer. Yeah. And we've just had another question asked if we could describe how to finish the map with a legend, North Arrow, etc., for <laughs> getting into your pan. Right. Okay, so that's where you go to. <laughs> this is the tricky bit. Um, so this takes a bit of fiddling around, trying to get it all to fit on the page. So you zoom to your boundary, and then you click on those three chevrons here, and you go print map. And because this is Google's American, it always defaults to letter, but we want A4. And we want, because Don's farm is um, a portrait orientation, so we select portrait. Um, so that means it's up and down. If it was like side to side, we'd choose landscape. And we choose our output to be PDF. And then Google goes away and it creates a map. Um, and there we go. <laughs> but <laughs> it's hit and miss. You can see that it hasn't even put in the property boundary, even though I had it ticked on here. So it's a little bit frustrating with the way it does it. So what you could do is just do a screenshot of your little legend and put it and mock up your own little map in Word. So if we did that, I'll just open up Word. So the easiest way would be to do it in Word, which is unfortunate because, you know, it's such potential. It's good to know that there are limitations that it's, you know, like, the, um, so it could also be done in PowerPoint. It can be done in PowerPoint. And somebody yep. said, could you add your property boundary as a polygon so it shows up? Well, you see how I've got it ticked? And I went and created the um, print map, A4, mm. and I said, you don't get any options, but I've ticked my property boundary and I've ticked current and I've ticked my, um, what I'm going to do in the next financial year. So it should. Is it, if you do it as a JPEG, does the property boundary show up? Right, we'll do that. No. So it's um just one of those things. It's a little bit hit and miss. And try, yeah, okay. PowerPoint. Somebody says in PowerPoint you could also add other features like the title and the additional data. Yes. Yeah. So you do a little screenshot of your um, map here and then a little screenshot of your legend. And north is always up the page. So that's north facing up. So that's really handy in Google My Maps is north is always going to be up the page. But if you use um, Google Earth or ArcGeo's Earth, you can rotate your map around and lose north. So for this one, yeah. north is always up the page. When, when I put this map, um John's map into power, our PowerPoint presentation, I couldn't get the whole map onto the slide. So that's something to consider. Um, that's why we didn't get to see all the other water courses that you had on your property. We could, I kind of focus, but that's because I wanted it to be quite focused in. So um, on that area there, and we missed the other water courses further up. Um, so yeah, okay, so that's, 
there's, yeah, it's all good to um, know. there's one point from practical aspect the different fertilizer at the different areas as i said earlier half of the farm is effluent sprayed yes um, and so has different fertilizer requirements because it's uh, the half that's not being sprayed obviously is going to need more out of the truck. Yep. Um, you want to know your fertilizer rate based yes, on your hectares. So so. I want to be able to know um, what is irrigated and what's not. And then I can have notes maybe um, to refer to in respect of what's required in the way of N, P, C, A, K, and all the rest of it in the different areas. Yep. So I just added another added a layer and I've called it fertilizer. So in here, you can say, okay, well, this part of the farm, we, um, because it's close to the river, and as you mentioned, you don't do the- Part of the spraying area. Yeah. So you can say, that's um, your spraying. You can save that, and then it gives you the area of 12.4 hectares. So then you know if you wanna sow your fertilizer at well, if it's dicalcic, if you sow it at 50 tonnes per hectare, you can work out how much fertiliser you need for that. That's it. Yeah, it is relevant because it gets quite, uh, what are we putting on here or there? What's irrigated, what's not? It's, um, uh, I guess what I'm, uh, making it more practical for um, uh, use. Yes, yep. Um, and you can add little notes in here. You can say, um, you can put in like your um, 2021 sowed dicalcic hey. at 50 tonnes per hectare or something like that. Would you believe um, maybe 500 kgs or 400 kgs per hectare? 400. <laughs> yep. I oh, know, because I'm just thinking like up here in Whangarei, we sow um, superphosphate at, well, part of the farm's at 100, um, oh yeah, it is a kilos actually, 100 kilos per hectare, and the other part of the farm is 300, and the poorer parts. So with that, being able to put the units of um, the elements uh, so that it comes up in writing so that you... Uh, oh, so if you wanted the, um, the NPK... Yes. In... I don't know what... I'm just making this up because I'm not quite sure what the NPK would be. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's just adding it to that. That's just adding it to that little polygon. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, um, and so it means, you know, next year when you come back and go, oh, what, what did I do there? That's How it. much did I spray? That's exactly right. And it'd be very handy to know because we do look back, what did we do last year? And so it is a handy to have that device available to us. Yeah. And that's why, um, like at the start, I said, when you start making your farm plan or your farm map, you start with your property boundary and then you can put in your farm blocks and your farm blocks might be your um, your farm management units, such as your fertilizer blocks or it might be your grazing blocks. And then you can add your little um, information about them. So, you know, if it, this is your farm block, this is your spraying area. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, we've got um, four minutes left here, Diane. Uh, is, if we've got any last questions, or would you like to um, head towards the last bit? What do you reckon? Yes. <laughs> That's choice. <laughs> awesome. Um, and we, we could do a little plug for the other uh, some more webinars that we've got coming up around the country. This is the first one in the series, and we're very fortunate to have Ron. Thank you very much for coming in this morning. Really appreciate that. 
And as you know, Brian's zooming in from Whangarei, which is really cool, modern technology. Uh, so this afternoon, and we've got another webinar in the Waikato with Rick and Diane um, in um, Thames area. And then we've got a whole list of others coming up um, and we should have put that up <laughs> on here, yeah. but that's okay. Um, so we just wanted to thank everybody for coming along. This so morning. they just contact nadine.berrett.landcare.org.nz, is that the story? That's right. In fact, I had a phone call during our <laughs> session this morning going, oh, how do I zoom in? So hopefully you managed to make it in time. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. Uh, it's really, really great to have you here. We're, we have been recording this, so if you want to go back and learn anything that um, uh, we that Diane has showed you to do on your, on the um, Google My Maps, you can do watch that again. Oh, and you're putting up some great links there. I put some links to the different um, geo, the mapping applications, so you can go and, and download and, and trial them all yeah. and see which one you prefer. And on our New Zealand Land Care Trust website on our events page is where all the other awesome webinars are. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so how do we find this to replay this? Oh, we will send you a link. Um, for all the people that registered, we'll, we'll send you a link on um, email so that you can come back and watch it. Yep. Very good. All right. Hope you hope your tea hasn't gone cold and um, <laughs> watching intently and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Hooray.